Hey guys, this is Jessica Solis McCarthy, one of the members of the Ultrasound Division here at UT Health San Antonio Emergency Department. This lecture is to introduce some concepts of ultrasound and how we could use ultrasound to guide central line placement. So why do we want to use ultrasound to guide us in central line placement? Well, in the emergency department, we often have a variety of body habitus that we have to work with. Many people have lots of subcutaneous tissue that obscures anatomical landmarks, makes it very difficult to get lines placed. Things like scars from IV drug use or prior set to lines can alter your anatomical landmarks as well. Contracted extremities, maybe a contracted neck, uh, limits some uh, the access to those vessels. And using ultrasound can help you identify uh, good sites to insert the central line. If a patient is hypotensive, the vessels can be collapsed and very difficult to find. And there's been research that's shown that uh, using ultrasound uh, increases success rates, it decreases access time, and definitely reduces complication rates. So the use of ultrasound for central line placement is the standard of care. Eighty percent of the battle is set up. You want to make sure that the patient is positioned appropriately, and you want to make sure that the ultrasound machine is in front of you and easily accessible. So first, you wanna set up your patient. If you're gonna do an internal jugular central line, you put the patient in Trendelenburg, like so. If you're gonna do a femoral line, what you wanna do is put the patient in reverse Trendelenburg. Positioning the patient in this fashion helps the veins engorge, and so you have a bigger target to aim for, increasing your success rate. Now let's talk about ultrasound machine positioning. So let's look up at, at the uh, upper left-hand corner. The ultrasound machine is across from the patient. So this staff member here is performing an abdominal paracentesis, but let's say they're doing a central line. Positioning the ultrasound machine across the patient, big no-no, all right? When you're first starting to evaluate uh, whatever vessel you're gonna be canalizing, uh, you wanna make sure that the ultrasound machine is in front of you and easily accessible. Here you kinda have to reach across the patient, so not ideal. What about the picture on the upper right-hand corner? This one, other big no-no, all right? You're gonna be doing a procedure in front of you. Ideally, you want the ultrasound machine also in front of you, so everything is aligned in front of you. You don't wanna be looking backwards. It just makes doing the procedure a lot more difficult. What about the bottom picture here? I'm gonna give this a big thumbs up, all right? Again, if you're doing a procedure in front of you, ideally you want the ultrasound machine in front of you as well. Now, let's talk about what probe we want to use for uh, central line placement or even a peripheral IV. So we want to use the linear probe. The linear probe is a higher frequency probe that really brings out the definition of those superficial structures including veins, arteries, and nerves. So when using the M turbos, for instance, you want to select the button where the linear probe is connected to, and the linear probe is on, and it's indicated by that green light that's flashing. Once you select your appropriate probe, you want to optimize your image. So with the M-Turbo, for instance, you go ahead and click on the exam button and bring up the appropriate exam. In this case, you want vascular. It really brings out certain definition to those vessels you're gonna be cannulizing. And you select it using a little mouse pad. Once done, you put the ultrasound probe in the area you're gonna be scanning, and you wanna optimize your image. So you wanna adjust the depth with these buttons here, make it more superficial or deeper. And if you wanna increase the gain, use the time gain compensation knobs here on the left side. You can adjust the overall gain the far field or the near field. Once the image is pretty clear, then you are ready to get your procedure going. So we first begin to explore where would be a good area to cannulize for the central line. And so what you wanna do is you always want to anchor. I've noticed a, a lot of the new people when they start doing procedures, they don't anchor and the probe starts sliding off the neck or off the arm and they start to wonder where'd the vein go? Well, if you anchor, you won't slide off. So make sure you use your pinky, ring, finger, middle finger so as to anchor and allow some stabilization of that ultrasound probe. Now when investigating a vein, 
you want to make sure that it is a vein. What does a vein look like? Well, vein has a very thin wall. It is very easily compressible. The inside of the vein will look black or anechoic, all right? And it will have a non-pulsatile flow. If you're not quite sure if the vessel you're looking at is a artery or a vein, uh, simply uh, put some color Doppler and you can see the flow. Now don't get confused, the blue and red does not stand for vein and artery. It is just the flow of uh, blood away and towards the probe. So for blue, it would be away. Uh, for red, it's going towards the probe. So do not get confused. You're just looking for pulsatility. So if the flow is pulsatile like here on the blue, that is artery. The one that's not as pulsatile, that red one, that is the vein. So investigate the lay of the land. Look for the largest diameter uh, of the vein and look for straightaways. You don't want to be cannulizing a torturous looking vein. Uh, too much turning left and right. You want something that's a straightaway. Next, what you want to look out for are arteries and nerves. Well, what do those look like? Here's an example. Arteries will have a thicker wall, they'll be pulsatile, and they will, are not as easily compressible as a vein. Additionally, nerves look like little honeycomb structures, and oftentimes they surround an artery. So you can see here, denoted in the yellow letters, median nerve, radial nerve, and ulnar nerve. So avoid arteries and nerves so as to decrease the amount of pain during a central line placement. Another thing you want to look out for are thrombosis. Thrombi can be very tricky. They can look anechoic or black, or they can look like a heterogeneous structure within the lumen. Here's an example of both. So in this video, you see a pulsating structure that is an artery, and right on top of it, there's another structure that is supposed to be a vein. Now in the beginning of the video, I'm compressing. However, the walls of the vein are not, the anterior and the posterior walls are not touching because something is obstructing it, likely a thrombus. As I scan up the leg, this is a popliteal vein, as I'm scanning up the leg, I start to see that there's actually a heterogeneous structure within the lumen of the vein. That is for sure a thrombus. So if you compress and the veins, the, the vein walls don't touch, or if you see a heterogeneous structure within the, the lumen of the vein, do not cannulate with the central line, otherwise you're gonna be flinging off those clots. So now you've evaluated the lay of the land. Next thing I want to go into is orientation. There are two ways in which you could put in a central line or a peripheral IV, and it's either the transverse or the longitudinal view. For beginners, I like to teach uh, putting central lines in using the transverse view, and I'll go into the details a little bit more. But when you cut the vein in the transverse view, you're cutting the vein like a loaf of bread. And this is what you see. So in the transverse view, or short axis view, or out of plane, all meaning the same thing, you're cutting the vein like a loaf of bread. And this is what you see on the ultrasound. Now I like to teach beginners a short axis view or the transverse view to do central lines because it gives you a good um, visualization of surrounding structures. You can see surrounding arteries, nerves, things that you just do not want to hit. Now the thing with transverse view, or short axis view, is that when you are placing a needle, you're coming in in an out of plane um, axis. And so when you're scanning the needle with the ultrasound, the needle shaft can look very much like the needle tip. So in order to identify whether you're scanning the shaft or the tip, what you want to do is with your hand, slide the ultrasound probe up and down along the needle and then go far enough so that you lose the needle, that hyperechoic dot, and then you know for sure you're past the needle. So you just kind of scan back up and find that hyperechoic dot, that little bright shining star, and you know for sure that that's the needle tip. Probably doesn't make sense, but let me show you this video here. So again, this is a short axis view, a transverse view of a vein. I put in a needle here, and you can see the needle tip there. I scan up and down, and you can see that the needle tip there is in the inside the lumen of the vein. So you can see that the needle tip is a like very bright shiny star, but as I scan up and down, I lose it, I come back, that's the needle tip. 
But if I scan back up towards the shaft, the shaft still looks hyperechoic and it could trick you to think it's a needle tip. So the goal with the transverse view is to always visualize the needle tip. Do not advance the needle if you cannot identify the needle tip. Now the other orientation in which you could put central lines in is the longitudinal view. In this view, you're cutting the vein in its long axis, so it's going to look like a long tubular structure. So in the example here in the image on the right side, you can see the ultrasound. The vein looks like a long tubular structure. Now I don't like to teach beginners how to do central lines using the longitudinal view because it's a little bit of a learning curve. You have to have good dexterity to control that ultrasound probe and you have to align the vein uh, and that the needle all in the same axis as, as, as the ultrasound rays. So for beginners, oftentimes um, they're not anchoring, so they're sliding, they're rotating side to side, um, they may be sliding off one side to the other, and not uh, visualizing the, the target. Um, you may confuse an artery for a vein, and you may be cannulizing the wrong vessel. So longitudinal view is very difficult, uh, but once you build the dexterity and you get more comfortable, you're more than welcome to do it. But I wouldn't worry too much about doing the long axis view. Here's an example of a vein being cannulized uh, using the long axis view. Again, you have to line up the vein and the needle along the ultrasound rays. And you actually see the whole needle along its trajectory. It's really neat. It lets you know how sharp of an angle you need to come in. And you're able to visualize the needle the whole time. However, it's limited in that it does not allow you to visualize surrounding structures, important structures, such as arteries and nerves. The only time I would actually use long axis view is just to verify placement of the guide wire, uh, just to make sure that it is going in the vein. Otherwise, as a beginner, I wouldn't be using long axis. Now, I want to teach you a little bit of uh, some tips and tricks that I have found useful. Uh, I'm going to allow your faculty to introduce you to the central line kit and all the ins and outs of that. Uh, but I want to show you how to put a sterile probe cover uh, over the ultrasound probe. If you've ever had to pick up dog poop at the dog park, you get a bag and you pick up the poop and invert the bag. Same concept translates over when placing a uh, sterile probe cover for the ultrasound probe. So the package uh, the sterile ultrasound probe cover comes in a blue package like this. This whole thing is sterile. And when you open it, you find all the essentials, including rubber bands, jelly, and the sterile probe cover. Here's an example of how to do it. So this is the ultrasound bag. I told you, uh, if you have a dog and you have to pick up their poop, it's kind of similar to that concept. So there's an area here that doesn't quite open. The other area you see it does. So what you want, what I like to do is I don't undo the bag. I just, the area that opens, I stick my hand in like that. I get the ultrasound jelly, tear it open, grab a little bit here, a little pocket. Then what I do is I grab the ultrasound pro and then invert it. What you want to do is just then use the uh, rubber bands so that you could keep the ultrasound jelly at the tip of the probe. So once the probe is covered with the sterile um, probe cover, you could place the whole sterile, the sterile probe over the patient's uh, blue drape. Another tip I want to give you is um, remember that hyperechoic bright star that you're trying to identify in the transverse view, and that's the needle tip. Um, another tip I want to teach you is that that bright star is created uh, by the bevel, which is the tip of the needle. What you want to do is you want to have that bevel pointing upwards towards the ultrasound probe. And so sometimes uh, the needle may twist and turn when you're doing the procedure. And so in order to verify that the bevel is pointing up, I like to line the bevel up with something on the syringe, whether it be the name of the syringe or the numbers. So I know that if the numbers are up, the bevel is up, and I should be able to identify that um, really bright hyperechoic signal from the needle tip. 
So another tip, remember, always anchor, whether it's using your pinky, ring finger, middle finger, always anchor so you're not sliding off with that probe. And then when you go in with your needle and syringe, bevel's always up, right? Introduce the needle tip about half a centimeter away from the probe. Once you penetrate the skin, do some negative pressure with the syringe. Always visualize the needle tip. If you lose it, just scan up and down, up and down. Remember, the shaft of the needle can appear hyperechoic, just like the needle tip. So keep scanning until you find the most hyperechoic, bright, shiny star. If you're not quite sure if you're at the tip, scan until you lose it, and you know for sure you're at the tip, scan back up, identify the needle tip, and follow that needle tip as you advance the needle. Always visualize the needle tip in the transverse view. That is key. Do not advance the needle if you're not identified the needle tip. So that's it. I'll let your faculty let you practice uh, with some of the dummies. Uh, wish you the best of luck. And remember, be patient. Practice is perfect. Ultrasound is a little difficult, but with some practice, you will get it. Thanks so much.